Hey guys, welcome back. This is the fourth lecture of our full stack Ruby on Rails bootcamp series. In the last lecture, we discussed about the types of variables in Ruby. In this lecture, we will discuss about the methods in Ruby. So, let's discuss what are the methods. So, in general or in programming, methods can be considered as a function. And function is a block where you can write some executable statements that can be used inside the program over the time. Okay, so a method in a Ruby is a set of expression that returns a value within a method. You can organize your code into subroutines which can be easily invoked from one area of their program. Okay, now let me show you an example that how we can define a method so for example this is a method uh, def and uh, you can see make it like example method okay and here you can write some executable commands so here are your expression okay so here you will put your expression and your expressions could be anything that you want to execute. It would be your logic or it would be your conditional blocks or loops or print statements or calculations, whatever it is. So it depends upon what expression you want to execute in that method. So you can change this body here. For now, I'm just uh, putting a, puts a statement here for hello world. So now let's copy this method and paste it into the IRB. Okay. Now, now you can see that uh, to run this method, I have to call it. Okay. Now this method has print the hello world on the terminal. Okay. So first you need to define a method and then you need to call that method to get the output of that method. Okay. Now we need to remember three points while implementing or while defining a method that a method in Ruby always start with the def keyword method name always start with a lowercase character just like the way we define local variables in Ruby and the third one is a method always ends with the end keyword like you can see here that uh, this is the def keyword from which method starts and this is the end keyword where the method ends okay and this is the same way as we define our local variables okay and we follow the camel casing here okay camel casing means that uh, ruby follows some conventions or any programming language that follows some conventions and these convention we can uh, naming convention for uh, naming their variables methods or classes and we can say it as a camel casing so what is the camel casing for methods in ruby is that for example if your method is only one word long okay only one word long then you just need to uh, write the method name in uh, all lowercase characters and if your method name contains multiple words then each word should be in lowercase character and separated by an underscore for example here you can see that my example method contains two words okay so what i did here that uh, i separated example and method by an underscore okay now suppose if i have only method like this for example greetings okay so what here is that i have only one word in the method and i have just declared it all the characters of this word as lowercase and here i separated each word by underscore and every character of uh, a word is lowercase character okay so this is the naming convention which we need to follow uh, while declaring the methods in ruby now now we need to discuss the types of methods method types can be two in ruby or we can say that there can be two types of methods in ruby the first one is method with arguments second one is 
method with no arguments okay now let's see the example of method with argument method with argument would be like uh, uh, while calling that method to execute that method successfully you need to pass few arguments to that method for example if i have a method which calculates area f area and it will take uh, area of rectangle and it will take two arguments length and width okay now what i need to return is that puts width okay now the another example area but it, this will not take these as argument okay we need to define length and width here like length equal to let's say 100 10 and width equal to 30 and then we can return So these are two different types of methods in Ruby. One with argument, one with zero arguments, or we cannot pass any argument to that. So first take the example with method with arguments. Let's come to the IRB, paste this method. Okay. Now, when you want to print or want to calculate the area, of a rectangle by multiplying length and width you need to you need to invoke this method and to invoke this method you need to pass length and width arguments successfully okay so let's try by having this only okay. now if you call area without passing these arguments you will see wrong number of arguments given zero expected to so what here is that this uh, method expecting two arguments length and width now if you pass one argument then you will see again the argument error that uh, given one expected to and if you pass one and five now which is exactly required then you will see get the uh, answer five here now if you pass more argue more argument than required then you will again see the error given three expected two so if you have defined that uh, uh, fixed number of arguments to a method then you must pass exactly the same number of arguments to that method no more no less okay now let's took the example of method with no arguments just uh, change this method name let's say rectangle area okay now let's call this rectangle area it will return 300 okay now if you pass an argument to this you will see wrong number of argument given one expected zero so uh, you have to use uh, differentiate between these two methods carefully because uh, sometimes uh, i often see that uh, these mistakes were uh, caused by the beginners or fresher programmers like sometimes they forget to pass arguments which are required to execute that method and sometimes they unnecessarily pass the argument which are not required at all so you need to differentiate this method and you need such a great practice for both kind of methods where you can understand that uh, when to pass arguments and when not to pass argument okay so that will be a great thing to learn and now the another important thing that i want to cover in this uh, section is the return statement okay what does it mean the return statement that by default in any programming language that you have seen that for example in c if we want to return uh, output from a function 
then we need to define the type of that function and then we can execute a return statement there but in ruby since there is no type so we don't need to uh, make the type or assign the type uh, to a method to get the value but by default the last line of the method in which you are invoking or a method or any method is the return statement of that method okay so for example you don't have to write this like if you do this this is also good this is not bad this can work as well okay now let's try okay you will see 12 okay now you can write here as well okay but uh, it does not make any sense why because by default last line of a method is always a return statement or all, always equivalent to the return statement so no need to make sense to add return to the last line of element in your method but you can use a return statement in a method based upon some condition like for example if some condition is passing then you might want to return some output or exit from the function before the final statement executes or um, in between at somewhere in the method so return statement is used to exit from the function okay and when your ruby program or ruby method get the return statement it uh, exit from it and uh, avoid the execution of uh, rest of the lines or rest of the code in that particular method for example if i use this method okay now let me print the rectangle area let me invoke this area you can see that i am seeing print here this lot this these three lines length 10 width 30 and length cross width is not getting executed okay so this is the use of return statement return statement so you can simply say that is always used for exit from some method unless it is required to use return in for some cases like where you don't want to go up to the last line of that method okay then you can use the return statement but by default if your last line is the return statement of your method then you don't have to mention return explicitly okay so this is the two different types of methods and use of return statement now another method which can have default argument so we can say like uh, a type of method method with default argument for example you can see the same method like make it third right now if we look at this then user must pass some values to execute this function successfully if you don't pass value of length and width then your program will throw an error but if you can provide some default value to it like let's say 10 and it's 20 okay now when you execute area method without providing any value then you will get the output 10 and 20 so this is how you can pass default argument to a method okay and your argument could be anything like this could be array this could be a hash or this can be a, uh, a string this can be nil or a object as well this can be true or false boolean values as well so you can pass default arguments like this so whatever we have discussed so far that is very important regarding the from the point of view of methods in ruby now that is the question time for our this lecture so we you can see there are four questions on the screen and we discussed everything on it so how many types of methods 
R in Ruby. So we have seen three types of method that method with argument uh, where if you define an argument then user must pass the value for those arguments to get that method work and method without argument and method with default arguments like uh, you must provide some default arguments and it's uh, choice of user that they want to provide values or not okay so if user provide values then there will be uh, then default values will be override by the values provided by user and if they don't pass value uh, then uh, default arguments will be used for method execution now how to pass default argument to a method in ruby so we have already seen that as well now the third question is when it is required to use return into ruby method and when it is not required to use return into a ruby method okay so answer for the third question is as we already discussed that when your last line is not your return statement or conditionally you want to return something between from your uh, method or something at this beginning of your method and after return there will be some code which uh, can be executed if that condition falls or your return statement fails then you can use return into ruby method but if you have if you don't have any complex condition or if you don't have any conditional logic in your ruby method and your last line will be the return statement then you don't need to use return statement explicitly why because last line of a method is already considered as return statement okay so that's from this video in the next lecture we will cover another important topic so till then thanks for watching this tata goodbye and take care